Hello and welcome back to this Trails in the Sky uh, third chapter let's play with me, SLJRPG. In the last episode we got ourselves Mr. Colonel Richard here in the Luminous Labyrinth, but today we're going to be facing this Star Door trial. So, all may set food into the store and claim to its rewards, however the f you first must overcome a trial. Should you, should this fail to deter you, open the door and step inside. Let's fucking do this. I did go and drink the CP fountain before I came here as well. Um, because I think whatever this is, it's probably going to be quite difficult. Um, so, what have we got here? Overcome this trial before you. Then sh I shall grant you a memory fragment and my blessing. So, what have we got here? We've got star guardians, we've got evil spirits. So this heals those who attack it when HP is over. But trouble, that causes nothing but trouble and petrifies. Oh dear lord, okay. We're going to try and take out as many of these in one big loop as possible, I think is probably the best best. If they petrify, that is not good. But, oh dear sweet baby Jesus. They are strong. Fuck, alright. We're using our CPs first. Okay. Oh, okay, they really do petrify immediately. That is not good. And then that's going to kill us. Okay. Let's retry that. Hmm. I really need something that will... Have we got anything here that will buff us and protect us? Single. We Earth Guard single, single area. Hmm. Mm, 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 mm. What are they weak to? So they seem to come all the way to here, which... So maybe this is where we need to... Uh, we need to focus our things on this? Is that the idea? Dear sweet lord, dear sweet baby Jesus. Right, have we got anything here that can just straight up cure? Okay, they're asleep. That helps, I think. Okay, this is not good. Uh, right, we need something. Softening Balm. They are all in one place. So let's try this. And then this. If not, we're definitely going to have to go and get ourselves some... Uh, Okay, we're dead now. All right, we're gonna we're gonna do this. I'm gonna figure out a way. A way will be figured out. Okay. Here was a better shot, wasn't it? Item. Let's use that sludgy cookie in a second. Maybe just moving back here. Maybe just moving back is not the worst idea, guys. Because what we want is to 
keep them at arm's distance. I think. <laughs> this might, of course, be a terrible, terrible idea. Um, I was not prepared. Okay, okay, okay. I have, I'm not surely I have a revolver, revolver, um, a, okay, none of that works, a sludgy, these sludgy cookies were good, so let's do that, and then from here, at least get that in, and then we'll do the next one, and get rid of this. See if that gives us a hand. Okay. Then we need to use this plate of excellence. And that's really annoying. This is bad. This is bad. Cures all elements apart from thing. Let's just hit. God damn it. Annoying. Okay, we're dead. I don't think that was a bad idea. I, there's a part of me that knows I'm probably going to have to go back and figure something else out here. But this is this has now intrigued me to the point where I have to commit. So let's go for one here. We're going to do the same here and then we'll, we want to attack ultimately when um, when these things are all clouded up together. If we manage to get a Ganea off. Right, now let's do it. Now let's do it. Have I got this as Julia Swartz's? Let's do... I want to attack the most at the same number of times, so that's probably going to be this, wait, probably these three here. Okay, we've almost got one. And then we want to use this on ones that are fairly stronger. Okay, and then lastly, this onto ones that are stronger, but we don't reckon we have to take out fairly easily, so there we go. Okay, this puts us at a way better position. Way better position. Let's use that sludgy cookie and take out those four. That's fine. That is fine, fine, fine. And then let us ascension this guy as much as we can. Do we have any Curia arts just to kind of get the party started a little bit? Nice. Arts here. Okay, that missed, which is shit. But it's blocked snap, which is good. We'll do a Curia onto Richard. Because now there's only one, it shouldn't be that difficult for us to fuck it up, is the thought process. We'll use... Keep using this until it comes good. We'll use a Curia onto... You girl. And then from this, we can just attack, right? And then with this Dark Matter, that should be it. Ooh, who needs fucking accessories, guys? Justice must always prevail. Nicely done. It's also going to give a hell of a lot of XP. Two. Um, we got some Shaman Shadows and a Kitty Suit. You have overcome the trial. Thus I shall grant you a memory fragment of my blessing. Nicely done.
Augment de are devices that use orbital energy contained within Septium to cause a variety of useful effects. It has only been a little over half a century since they were first invented. Even in such a short time, they have already revolutionized the world as we know it. From daily necessities, such as lighting and heating, to tanks and other similar weapons used to defend our nations, augments are used in just about every facet of our lives. In fact, it is now hard to imagine our life without them, so much of what we take for granted in life now involves them in some way, and it is to proliferate and advance the development of these augments that we exist. Yes, we, the Epstein Foundation. Our foundation was first established in 1155 of the Septium calendar, the year after Professor Epstein's passing, and was created by his brilliant-minded disciples in order to honour his wishes. The foundation is based in his home state of Le Mans, where it remains in operation to this day. It is rather limited in size in the beginning, but his attempt to spread orbital technology was initially met with little success. Sensing that the professor's dream would never be realised at the rate we were going, three key researchers, researchers left a month to try and spread the seeds of orbital technology around the continent themselves. One of these was Professor G. Smith. The professor, who gained a fine reputation for his own skill in the field of mechanical engineering, went around and visited cor corporations in various nations to persuade them of the benefit of all this. The second was Professor L. Hamilton. Mindful of the technological gap between regions, he long believed it was rural, remote areas that needed open to technology more than any other, and as such he enlisted the help of the Bracer Guild, which had already had a close relationship with the Foundation, and formed a mission with the intent of promoting and spreading their technology where applicable. The Professor himself self also toured the regions with the aim of spreading public awareness and laying foundation for others to build on in the future. The third was Professor A. Russell, known far and wide as the father of the Orbital Revolution. Professor Russell returned to his home nation of Livery and continued to work tireless, tirelessly to advance the open technology there, and within a year of returning, he had set up the Zeiss Engineering Factory, now known as the Zeiss Central Factory, or ZZF, and created the first augment to be made outside of the state. Three years later, the reigning king of Liberal at the time, Edgar III, visited the factory to inspect it, but he decided to donate a large amount of money to further its research. With his majesty's endowment, ornaments began to spread like wildfire throughout the kingdom, bringing such prosperity that the people of other nations were filled with envy. Up until then, most people didn't see ornaments in a particularly positive light, but in the success of Liberal, but their success in Liberal changed those impressions virtually overnight. One nation after another began to reach out to the foundation to share open technology. Both our foundation's financial and social standing became that much more secure. In the eyes of the world, the Orbital Revolution was a far, sudden far-reaching transformation, which was only because of years of reaching out to people and diligent, largely unnoticed research that it was able to happen at all. The Foundation's activities centre around the following three guiding principles. Carrying out fundamental research and augments, spreading orbital technology and informing the public of its benefits, and contributing to world peace through technology. Now, let's discuss each of these three guiding principles in more depth. 1. Carrying out fundamental research orbits. The Foundation's most important mission is, naturally, the improvement and development of orbital technology. The fundamental principles of ha behind how augments work need no improvement as such, but their architectures, their internal structures, have been improved upon countless times in the past and will surely go on to be perfected by the curious minds as the years go on. Orbman's architecture concerns the mechanical parts inside them, such as the cogs and screws, and there is still plenty of room for change as this new technology develops. These improvements can reap great rewards, but the research necessary to make them is known to be as lengthy as it is expensive. As a result, companies who prioritise profit over all else are less inclined to pursue them. That makes our foundation's research all the more important from a social perspective. 2. Spreading the orbital technology and informing the public of its benefits. Two other important goals of the Foundation are to spread orbital technology as widely as possible and to educate the public on the correct way to use it. While ornaments have become part of our daily lives, of most who live in advanced nations populate with populated urban areas, the reality in remote and mountainous regions is very different. 
To counter this, we have worked to send missions of engineers and bracers to these regions to try and better the standard of living for these people. And we'll continue to do so. We also continue to work on way other ways to spread awareness of orbital technology. <laughs> such as working closely with the Septian Church to have it added to the curriculum of Sunday school classes, contributing to the world peace through technology. It is to pursue this noble yet extremely difficult goal that which the Foundation has, has had a close relationship with the Bracer Guild ever since its initial founding. The Guild was established as an international peacekeeping organisation and can mediate on conflicts between nations from a neutral point of view, making it essential to the stability of our world as it stands. The Epstein Foundation continues to back them up fully in, in their cause with both financial aid and using the fact that Lemon State is the only place where tactical ornaments are produced to provide them with equipment. Just as well, this relationship also provides ideal feedback towards tweaking the quality of tactical ornaments as they are used in combat too. Every machine, every invention goes through a long grilling process behind the scenes, for eventually reaching its finished, refined form, and tactical ornaments are no exception. <laughs> Sorry guys. Then in time of Septian calendar, 1190, our foundation unveiled the Orbital Network project, which was implemented in partnership with the ZCF. Said projects to aim to fill, join all Zemeria together with a single united communications network, but I hope is that it would do more than that. I hope is that it would help realise a peaceful world through communication. Sadly, Orbit's relationships with peace as a concept has become somewhat complicated. Are they aiding in its realisation or doing the exact opposite? Professor Epstein expressed his hopes in their ability to realise the limitless looping of energy would be able to bring a lasting peace to the world. Instead, in recent years, years they have thoroughly betrayed those hopes. The post-revolution world has been a chaotic one indeed. The conflict between Liberal and Abonia, for one, made significant use of orbital weaponry, airships included. It seems beyond a doubt that orbital weaponry will continue to become more and more advanced, making war an even more tragic event than ever. In the face of all this, how should we go about trying to educate a peace, trying to create a peaceful world? We believe to do that is to rely on the power of communication as a means to do so with people of different nationalities and races. If these people can more be can more easily interact and more easily deepen their understanding of one another, perhaps this will allow us to create a world where we where we all that to create the world we all so dearly desire. In the end, one thing is certain: our challenge is to try and realise Professor Epstein's ideals are only just beginning. There we go. Story: The Epstein Foundation finished. Received Ingenuity Two Seven Thousand Mirror. Very nicely done, and I think that's a good place to say. If you've enjoyed this episode, please like and subscribe, and I'll see you guys next time for another door. Peace.